Welcome to the Cannabis Innovators Show. My name is Michelle Holliday. We host this show at Portfolio Wealth Global. And after our must-listen-to interview with one of the industry's top entrepreneurs in the field of compliance and exhibition, Randy Shipley, today we are hosting an entrepreneur who is proving that marijuana is not an all-boys club. She is using her feminine touch and French cuisine to build a successful business, where else? The marijuana kingdom of California. She is an entrepreneur who has come to the cannabis industry from a career on Wall Street. As many of our listeners already know, Portfolio Wealth Global founder Tom Beck is a 33-year-old businessman who started off in real estate where he made his early fortunes and for the past seven years zoned in on stock market wealth and built our free newsletter, which now reaches investors all around the world, and our YouTube shows, which are designed to educate investors. Tom is absolutely thrilled at the legalization process in the United States and Canada and predicts that it will be bigger than the end of prohibition. Today, we have with us Kim Garrity, co-founder of Madam Munchie, a medical marijuana company based in California. Kim, welcome to the Cannabis Innovators Show. Thanks, Michelle. It's great to be here. My first question to you is this. How did you become attracted to the cannabis industry, especially the medical marijuana side of it, and why? I first encountered cannabis when I was about 13 years old during a trip to uh, Amsterdam, where my father was working at the time. We walked by a cannabis shop, and um, I was attracted by the smell and asked him what the shop was. And he sort of explained, well, there's menus in there and flavors and people taste things. And I was pretty interested and wanted to go, but he said, well, you have to be 18. Oh. So then later on, when I was around 16, actually, I had been diagnosed with um, ADD previously as a young kid in America and was taking Ritalin. But I was actually a teenager living in France where Ritalin wasn't um, even allowed for people my age. So I had this uh, double perspective on all of this and um, encountered cannabis again at a party. And really enjoyed the effects, found it very soothing, relaxing, calming. And so the next time I was in uh, the States and uh, meeting up with my um, ADD doctor, I mentioned that to him. And he was actually the first person to tell me that cannabis could have um, medical purposes as well and that many people used it to self-medicate. And if it worked for me and my grades stayed high and um, my social life was still the same, he didn't really have any issues with me switching to that. And that was actually the last time I ever saw him. And I never took Ritalin again or any of uh, the other pills that had been um, subscribed to me at the time as a 16-year-old. But I did smoke uh, cannabis every day. And I graduated at the top of my class in high school, went to one of the best colleges in France, and ended up working in finance on Wall Street and then in venture capital later on. So for me, the case had been made that cannabis was a real thing that people should get access to. And why was it not easier to have access to this? And that's when I became began my crusade to uh, personally legalize this for everyone. Hmm. Talk to us about the demand and the culture today of cannabis in California. I think the culture here is fascinating because really this industry has already been going on for so many years and uh, medical legalization itself has been around for uh, um, over 20 years. Or um, So th- there's definitely been a lot of involvement, a lot of activism, a lot of uh, creativity. Um, it just blows my mind to see how big the industry already is here. Um, so the demand is definitely very high and I'd say it's growing because a lot of people here have a more holistic approach to health and they're interested in natural uh, herbal remedies. They're interested in just being healthy, not using chemicals, not using prescription drugs, which can lead to other kinds of uh, addictions. So um, I'd, I'd say it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> now, where is the edibles industry in particular going to be in about two to five years from now? And what sort of innovations can consumers expect to see? Uh, I think there's going to be a ton of innovation still to come. I kind of see dispensaries ultimately becoming like supermarkets for cannabis in the sense that they're the stores that hold the rights to sell the cannabis to the people. And so they'll sell it under every variation that you can imagine. So as this applies to edibles, the more testing we get and the more specific we get with our dosage and our information and our education, I think the consumption of edibles is going to continue to increase. And I mean, technically, there you could infuse anything that's edible. So I don't see any limits to the creativity of the market. 
Is there any resistance at this point from conservatives that you've experienced who might still think of cannabis as a harmful drug? Well, yeah, I think we've definitely observed that on, you know, with our current politics. Jeff Sessions is an obvious answer. Um, The way he portrayed it as equivalent to heroin addiction just blows my mind. And um, I mean, personally, it's affected me in many ways. It creates stress to believe that that's how the government perceives something that I actually find to be extremely helpful. Um, And also, I think it's just unfair to compare it to something that's killing thousands of people in our country right now when most people can find in cannabis a relief and actually a way away from those types of addictions. Mm. So that would just be one, you know, person who comes to mind specifically, but the whole crusade and the war against drugs is just very harmful to anyone who might be able to benefit from cannabis. What do you think that the states and the federal government should be focused on? Um, Well, the way it's going now, I think, has been positive ever since the coal memo and we've had Uh, less interference from the federal level so that businesses who abide by state laws can continue doing their business. And I think that's how it should be. States overall should focus on making sure at a local level everything's running smoothly, whereas the federal government has many other issues that they can attend to that don't involve, you know, going against a law that a state has actually passed, especially when there's been a referendum or um, just whatever you call it here, sorry, that would be the French equivalent, but um, (laughs) of, uh, you know, 55% of the people of the state voting for something, I think that's a clear sign that the federal um, forces shouldn't interfere with that law. Exactly. Now, tell us about Madam Munchie, especially for our California audience, and also please mention some of the awards that your company has won. Yes, so Madam Munchie is uh, California's leading premium edible company. We started in uh, 2014, well actually my co-founder Ashley and I met in uh, 2013 in San Francisco. So my background was, uh, as I mentioned a little bit before, finance, growing up in France, um, loving French pastries obviously, and um, Ashley's background is uh, she's a true California native, um, grown up in the cannabis culture. So her family's been growing for several decades and... um, up in Mendocino County, um, which as a French person coming to California, it just struck me as the equivalent of our champagne regions, you know, for champagne and our wine regions in France. Mm -hmm. So I was immediately attracted by the quality that her family has been um, uh, promoting for all these years. And together we started Madame Munchie to create a product that would really help change the stigma and the way people perceive it so they can understand this isn't just a back alley kind of drug. This is actually a real um, food experience, a real life experience that can be consumed with the highest levels of quality possible and uh, little by little change uh, people's uh, image of it. Mm -hmm. Now, the awards in the marijuana industry, talk to me a little bit about them. Yes. So um, we started off with the uh, High Times Cannabis Cup. So High Times has been going on for more than 40 years. They started the Cannabis Cup back in Amsterdam originally. And um, that's a very prestigious um, award to have received right off the bat. So that was incredibly helpful uh, for us. And um, um, we continue to win the um, San Francisco Patients Award, which is uh, actually sadly was uh, has been discontinued, but was a San Francisco event promoting edibles where a hundred different patients get to judge collectively all the products. Mm-hmm. Um, we also won several awards from uh, HempCon, another great um, event for the industry in California, and from the Edibles List, which is a, a magazine that um, tells you all you need to know about the edibles in California. Now, Kim, tell me some of the delicious, I, I know them already <laughs> for our audience, <laughs> describe to me some of the delicious edibles that you guys produce right now. So our flagship product is French macarons, and they come in five different flavors in our original pack. We have hazelnut mocha, citrus almond, tropical jungle, which is a chocolate ganache and banana puree, green gold, which is a pistachio butter with honey, and then grilled PB&J. Then we also make special holiday flavors. So we have a Halloween box and a winter box. They come with flavors like Frankenstone or um, a little uh, snowman. and vanilla bean, all sorts of flavors, salted caramel with apple. And then uh, we just recently launched a new product, which are French Madeleines. So our macarons come with uh, 20 milligrams of THC in each macaron. 
and the madlins come with 10 milligrams of THC in each madlin and they're bite sized so it's for a more of a everyday consumption at a at a slightly lower dosage hmm. um, and we have more coming out soon so stay tuned <laughs> <laughs> who is your typical customer um, I actually think that's one of the hardest questions to answer because that's something I love about cannabis is that it really doesn't discriminate and I've met a wider variety of people by working in this industry than by anything I've ever done in the world, including mm-hmm. traveling to more than 35 countries, for example. So it really, our customers are all sorts of type. We get um, senior women who love the quality and design and the, you know, small uh, version. Uh, we get young men who are excited by uh, the colors and the cool flavors. Um, we get couples who are gifting boxes to each other. Um, it's really all over the place and that's what I love about this industry. And the medicinal side of it. Yeah, so I, I was actually just recently at the uh, High Times uh, Cannabis Cup again uh, this past weekend in San Bernardino and noticing how so many of the attendees are pretty sick patients, really. I mean, they're, you know, in wheelchairs, they're, you know, missing um parts of their bodies or uh, functions or all, all sorts of things. And it, it just um, saddens me so much to think that people are trying to shut down this event because really what it is is it's um, sick people having fun. I mean, <laughs> that's what it is. And that's where they go to find their relief. Now, the THC factors, talk to us a little bit about that that you mentioned. Please just go into that a little bit. Um, for the dosage or the different yeah, types? Yeah, yeah. How, how, for the average person such as yeah. myself who really knows nothing about, let's, yeah. let's start with what is THC? Uh, is it for just medical patients? Does it yeah, help? Yeah, it's alleviate? a great question. Great. Um, so there's two main things in cannabis that we've identified so far as uh, medicinally um, helpful. Um, one is THC and the other is CBD. And the w- best way I can describe it is they both have medicinal properties. Um, the CBD um, properties tend to be more muscular, so you really feel them uh, physically in your body, um, whereas the THC properties can also be more um, psychological, so you'll feel them in your mind, like your ideas will relax or um this issue that was just really bugging you, you're going to start seeing a new perspective on it and realizing, oh, well, you, you shouldn't have, there's no reason for you to get so mad, you know. So that's what I mean by more like mental. So, but the THC can also have the um, muscular effects. And I also believe that the CBD can have some of the mental effects. So I think we're still discovering a lot about it. Um, but that, so saying that is to say that the CBD is what we're using more for children today, whereas THC is and CBD is being used for adults. Our products have a little bit of both. Um, So for edibles in particular, it's really good to start really slow, especially if you've never had them before. Just because of the psychological slash mental effect, you might be taken by surprise and not have realized that your brain was even capable of analyzing things differently before. Hmm. So, and that can be a little scary to realize, wow, actually I can see issues from different perspectives, you know? So, um, to go back to the milligrams and the dosage, um, we follow Colorado guidelines that were issued when they um, went recreational, which was to say that five milligrams of THC is good for a first time user. um, And then 10 milligrams of THC would be good for an occasional user. And then 20 milligrams or upwards is going to be great for a regular user, but it can go quite upwards from that because patients who really have a lot of severe pain might actually be eating 500 milligrams of THC in one day. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge spectrum. What is the future vision for Madam Munchie? We are continuing to create the world's most delicious edibles and um, really create an experience for people to um, feel life in a more blissful way. So we have some new products coming out this year, and um, we also um, um, are, since we are a vertically integrated company, um, we have some operations in Mendocino County, and we're looking to um, spend more time up there and really help promote the culture of quality that um, has been sustained there for so many years. What are some of the other cool businesses that you have run into, and what kind of opportunities are there in this industry? There's so many. <laughs> One of my favorites would be um, Apothecary. Um, it's a 
amazing business started by Whitney Beatty. Um, she sells cases for the classy stoner. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're really beautiful. Um, and then also Healthy Hetty, um, started by Holly. Um, it's kind of the Mary Kay of Mary J, like she says. And I think it's just great what she's doing for educating patients and providing more of an in-home experience. But really, there's no end to the number of cool things I've seen since joining this industry and the opportunities, even on the you know software side, on the distribution side, delivery. But the one I find the most interesting is really the education and the rebranding of cannabis. Talk to us a little bit about that, the education and the rebranding. Well, I think that's where everything starts because once people understand what this product actually is and realize that it's not like heroin, then they can actually start having a educated, interesting discussion and realize if it might be for them. For example, I know people who personally, you know, take pills to help them sleep at night or take pills to help them focus during the day. And I see the side effects that these pills have on them over the years. And the main reason, it's not even just the lack of education. That's why I really think it's also about the rebranding because they know that cannabis might be a good viable option for them, but they're not even allowed because it's still illegal where they live. So they can't even try. And that's why the rebranding, I think, is going to be the most powerful approach to um, helping legalize it everywhere. Now, for our audience members who might want to get into the cannabis industry, what are some of the lessons and pitfalls that you've experienced and what is the best advice that you can give? (laughs) Um, Definitely a lot of lessons. The main one, I guess, is don't give up if this is really what you want to do because it's going to be a long road. But it's hard to run a business in an environment that is still a political activism fight, really, when things are still so uncertain and so many moving pieces, gray areas, legal issues. So just be ready for that, because this is still a political fight that we're going through. And if your business can support that, then it will thrive as well. Kim, this has been an amazing interview. Where can people find your products? I'm sure that's the most important question people are thinking right now. And what is the best way to contact you? They can find our products throughout dispensaries in California. The best way to find the dispensaries would be to go on our website, madammunchie.com. There's a maps page where you can find the location closest to you. And the best way to contact us is through our website, or you can contact me personally at kim at madammunchie.com. Okay. Kim Garrity, thank you so much. Co-founder of Madam Munchie for the Cannabis Innovators Show. I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. It is a wonderful thing to see cannabis entrepreneurs working so hard to build businesses from the ground up. The cannabis industry today reminds Portfolio Wealth Global's founder, Tom Beck, of the computer industry in 1985. Tom is currently in Washington, D.C. at the biggest marijuana business convention of the year. Tom reports that one of the speakers surveyed the crowd of thousands and asked how many of them owned a cannabis stock or investment. Only four people raised their hand. When he asked how many would like to own a cannabis stock or investment, everyone raised their hand. There is a clear demand for knowledge right now. And like yourself, many listeners of the Cannabis Innovators Show may be looking for reliable guidance. Portfolio Wealth Global is at the forefront of this. At the convention, business owners explained that they cannot even swipe company credit cards yet. This is how early we are right now in the growth curve. Stay with the show and be sure to subscribe to the Portfolio Wealth Global's free newsletter. Coming up on our future shows, we have the founder of an international organization which has supported the legalization of cannabis since the early 1970s, the CEO of a California company which is launching the best new cannabis companies in the country, and an NFL Super Bowl star who is now a cannabis entrepreneur focused upon professional athletes to offer an alternative, protecting them against the dangers of addictive pain prescriptions. For the Cannabis Innovators Show, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com.